the state of gaming. Don't you just love these inflammatory videos that come around every so often just to bash the industry? Well, so do I. So that's what we're gonna be doing. But let's not go full doom and gloom because there are some levels of hope returning to the industry, albeit from Xbox of all places. The recent showcases are pretty much one of the onsets or reasons why I'm doing this whole video. And some of the hype around it is definitely warranted, but I think we should be cautious about how we proceed here and where we essentially vote with our wallets, so to speak. Games like Expedition 33 and Gears of War E-Day are some of the prime examples of where we should be excited, but I wholeheartedly believe that hyped may be the wrong word to use here. While they show some level of return to form for gaming, they still both have yet to give anything out of in-engine trailers and vertical slice gameplay. And for those who don't know what vertical slice is, think of like the Watch Dogs E3 trailers. It's a gameplay trailer designed purely to sell the game and make it look like what the devs are going for rather than the actual final product. A lot of the people who make these types of video videos are focused on visual aspects of the games and the characters, and not really the games themselves, so to speak, if that makes sense, purely jumping to conclusions because they made a character uglier than what they previously expected or previously were. Well, some of it is tampering from things like DEI. I think a lot of it also has to do with like the uncanny valley of realistic fidelity combined with sci-fi futuristic characters and just characters in general. I think we've kind of hit that peak where now things are getting so realistic, but when you put them in like a 3D graphics engine, they come out looking super uncanny and weird. And a character I see that's kind of getting this treatment the most is definitely Joanna Dark from the newest uh, Perfect Dark trailer. And while I think like her facial area is fine, I think they really just need to fix her oddly shaped jawline to be honest. But I also think their intention is to show that the character is aged up, kind of, and isn't some blatant attempt to ruin the character. Though that isn't to say that the uglification, so to speak, of female characters in gaming isn't going on. Um, industry veterans like Del Walker have all but confirmed this on platforms like Twitter where they have essentially stated that they'll turn in designs for characters that are, you know, what are stereotypically beautiful or however you want to word that. And then they'll come back looking like grocery store aunties is the way that he put it, which I think is just hilarious. But anyway, I think some minor tweaks would fix these characters entirely, at least when it comes to like Joanna in the Perfect Dark Zero remake and a few other characters that they've showed. But really just getting rid of these like super stereotypical features on characters and just like for some reason adding these like masculine jawlines where they don't need to be on characters that are you know historically more attractive i think that that stuff just needs to go but i think we're kind of heading on the right path in terms of character design with some of these games i think there just really needs to be some minor tweaks and it would essentially be perfect and really uh the focus just comes down to respecting what the artists are pitching rather than like sending it through 10 people and getting back these characters that are a process of committee rather than artists if that makes any sense. And then of course you have characters like Angela from the Silent Hill 2 remake who don't need to be drop dead gorgeous and I think their redesigns look fine in my opinion. I mean it's actually kind of weird to be dying on a hill that a character that's supposed to be a representation of an SA victim is being demanded to be some like baddie when overall she looks just fine as is if you're not using these like over conflated pictures that people are taking from bad angles of the trailer i think a hill that actually is worth dying on is the fact that the gameplay looks like a shitty unreal 5 asset flip vertical slice trailer with extremely mid combat but again we're not really playing silent hill for looks the game is about atmosphere and story not really about how everything uh, at least the characters look uh, at a face value. And I think when you're looking at like attractive characters, if you really want to make them realistic and aren't going for like this old Tomb Raider style or like Princess Peach where they're just like drop dead gorgeous for these female characters, 
I think one of the most perfect example of how to do realistic female characters that are also appealing to everyone to where when you look at them, it's like, oh, they're not just about like their sex appeal or however you want to put that. It's like Linda and Catherine B320 from Halo or Cat from Halo Reach. And so when you look at these characters, you look at them and like their faces are appealing, yeah. they're attractive, but it's not like, oh my God, home and a home and a home. Like they're just attractive. They, they look nice. They're appealing to look at. And of course they have helmets on all the time. But of course, when you take off those helmets and you have a face, you want to see something that looks realistic. They don't have these weird like masculine jaw lines. Or anything like that. They have sharp jawlines, sure, because they're fucking super soldiers that are incredibly muscled out and augmentated. But they don't have like these weird unfeminine jawlines or like these weird androgynous looks. I really hate that kind of deal where they're going for androgynous character design. And the problem with androgynous is that masculine features come out way before the feminine features. So you're going to notice the masculine traits way more than you're going to notice the feminine traits. And I think that's something that really needs to be fixed upon. I know like if it's like a whole ass agenda, then it's something that <laughs> is unfortunately going to have to be voted out with wallets and uh you know investors but at the same time i think that the message is at least somewhat starting to get across when you look at games like expedition 33 and you see like okay these characters aren't like all bombshells but they're they're appealing to look at and that's something that i think is extremely important is like the characters need to be appealing to look at and I think it gets really over-purported, especially on platforms like Twitter, which, you know, Twitter is always going to be Twitter where everyone's a fucking raving lunatic. But at the same time, what you have there is that these characters need to be in a, made in a way that is like realistic to what people want to see on screen. People don't go to the movies to see, you know, Karen from down the street that goes to the grocery store. Like, they don't want to see her in the movies. And the funny thing is, neither does Karen. They want to see these like big name actors who are known because they are so far above everyone else that everyone wants to look up to them and say like, wow, I want to look like that. You know, like I don't look at Ryan Gosling and say, oh man, he, he makes me look so much lesser of a man. He's so good looking, but I can like, no, you look at Ryan Gosling, like, God damn, that guy's cool. Like everyone looks at this guy he's like hell yeah you know fucking ryan gosling and i think that's just something that needs to be taken into consideration with games especially if these developers want people to actually support them it's just like i don't think people are asking for every character to be like oh they need to have an hourglass figure and look amazing it's just just look presentable and look like normal human beings don't like add these gremlins that look just fucking weird and I think that's one of the biggest problems with gaming right now. But I think there has, like I said earlier, been some level of improvement. I think they just need to work on tweaks and just making the faces more realistic rather than trying to go for these androgynous looks where it's just like you've never seen people that look like this and they just look extremely uncanny with this realistic fidelity. And going back to my point earlier about the Twitter thing is that people act like just because you want characters that are appealing to look at means you're, oh, you're some coomer that wants to, you know, jerk off to all these characters or every character has to be 2B. And that's just not the case. I feel like that's over purporting the argument or basically blowing up the argument of a very minority group of people that think that kind of shit i think that what most like the average normal human being wants is just characters that look physically appealing because when i play a game i like how my character looks that's one of the things that make like custom character games so popular is because you can make a character how you want them to look people like the aesthetics of the character that they're playing people don't want to be playing a character oh this character looks like joanne from the grocery store it's like awesome i guess like no one no one wants to be playing that and of course with the state of current gaming you can't do these kinds of videos without mentioning microtransactions so i'm at least going to do this once i don't think this is a take really anyone besides like two people who decide to wail on everything have 
but microtransactions really need to be toned down with loot crates. One thing I have mentioned on Twitter that I don't want to see with Gears of War E Day is the return of like the loot crates and crate drop systems and like buying new characters for points. I really think a brunt of the characters should just be unlockable through gameplay. And if you really want to do DLC characters, just do DLC packs like was done in Gears 3. I think that works just fine because you buy the pack and then you get the characters that you want. This bullshit where every character skin has to cost $20 is just really stupid it, like i don't know like honestly fortnite fucking ruined this i don't know why now the base price for a skin is a quarter of the price of the game where now you buy four skins and it caught four skins. Oh. Uh, you buy four skins and it costs the price of the fucking game like that should never be happening why why in the fuck is four skins the price of the fucking game it's ridiculous and this process just needs to be cut out entirely if these games are so big and so costly that that's the only way to make back any revenue then tone down the fucking game man why are you gonna keep going and hammering at these stupid ass aspects if it's gonna cost you twenty dollars just to do any level of customization or character creation it's just getting ridiculous but i don't really want to harp on this too much because it's one of the most generic points in these videos and something that gets harped on so goddamn much everyone knows microtransactions are bad i don't think i've seen a single person that's like dying on the hill like we need these microtransactions so that the game can keep going it's no I, I don't see that at all unless someone's like a raving lunatic so we're not really gonna harp on this too much another thing that i feel like a lot of people don't point out in these kinds of videos anymore is that gaming when these presentations used to came out like come on you used to have like all these figures right you had like iwata you had reggie you had shuhei yoshida and all of these like huge figures that used to come out for these things and now that everything is on that like bite-sized direct format you don't really have those happening anymore like you'll get a random jump scare from todd howard but at the same time it's like come on man like all these people in gaming now it feels like it's so corporatized and now that so many studios are just completely owned by these big companies like sony and microsoft and so on and so forth that it's like you don't have these characters anymore you just have like these corpo suits and one person that i like to point out and like she's completely qualified to run xbox her name is i believe sarah bond and she's like really good with the role and like you know really likes to hype up xbox and it seems like it's really nice there but at the same time you look into this person's past and their entire past is working at like t-mobile and other non-gaming kinds of things so it's like really are these people in these top level positions actually gamers or are they just people who got into business or the tech and just like tech industry and just went there because that's where the money was and i feel like that's something that's really happened throughout this industry whereas like 20 years ago everyone who was in the gaming industry learned these skills specifically to be in the gaming industry where now te it, like tech has essentially just consumed gaming and is just one of the generalized fields in tech. So now you have all these people who have no interest in gaming but got into the tech field because of the money. And you have these games being made by people who don't care about the medium or just don't want anything to do with it in general and are there because that's where the money is because tech and gaming these jobs pay about as well or better than most of the actual tech jobs that you'd find over at google or the other mainline companies that you'd find and i feel like the industry has been taken over by these people who just don't care about the gaming industry and which is why everything feels so corporate now from AAA. and when you look at a lot of these positions and like the higher up positions especially on the business side and not the tech side you see that it's just people who have been involved with every which company and they have zero accountability like the head of ea is just constantly failing upwards or the previous head of ea i forgot his name but essentially he went and tried to do all this nft bullshit 
shit. And then ended up getting ousted from the company only to find another higher level executive position at Unity, which then tanked as well. And he's somewhere else now in an even higher position. And I think that's something that doesn't get brought up enough is that these people just get, they get wormed into the actual like gaming sphere of what makes like, like the people making the games. And they keep these high level executive positions despite their previous or past failures. This is the same for like Don Matrick when he left Xbox, he just had another golden parachute. And that's something that really needs to be held to like some kind of standard. It feels like with these corporate executives that essentially run the entire AAA space now, there's zero standards. No one ever tries to stand out. Like with Sarah Bond, she, like I said, she's qualified for the position and everything. But at the same time, whenever you see her on stage or in these presentations, it's just like, oh, here's a sales pitch for our new console, or here's the most corporate speech ever about why everything we just showed you was good. And I feel like it, like long gone are the days where like some passionate developer would come out on stage and sit there and just kind of talk about what they've been working on or what's going on within the company. Like I remember back in the day when like Bill Gates would come on stage and show Halo 3 or any of this other stuff, like you don't really have that now. It's just so corporate. And I think that's one of the biggest downfalls of modern gaming is just the complete lack of understanding. It's essentially the Hollywood treatment where it was something that went from an art form to being just another career field that checks boxes. And that's where things need to change is there needs to be some kind of happy medium of corporate checking boxes, but also still respecting artistic integrity. And then this also goes back to like the character designs and everything of that nature. But at the same time, it's like, how do you do this? Like, how do you make these changes other than just not buying these games and supporting what's right? I mean, that's all you really can do is you can voice these opinions and, you know, this video is going to do jack shit. You know, it's not like fucking anyone like me, Asmin Gold, or, you know, any of the bigger creators 10,000 times bigger than I am will ever have any say or change in this but maybe if people keep talking about it and people keep changing their opinions on how things should be or what they want to see we'll actually see some level of change here but that's why in the past i harp so like harp so hard on corporatism and why like popularity isn't a good thing and just endless popularity or why one of the things that i think is like extremely toxic is the uh I hate the word toxic, by the way. It's one of the most overused, overplayed words uh, to ever come out of the gaming sphere. Anyway, one of the things that I hate about like Reddit communities is that it's you either love or hate the product and then you're only allowed to have that opinion within that echo chamber. Like when the Fallout show came out, you were only allowed to like the show or else everyone just dogpiled on you and they were even like kicking people and you know banning them because they were over critical of something and it's just one of those things where having these areas where people just congregate and share and echo one opinion is also just been another terrible thing for gaming because they just go to these spheres they listen to them and them alone and then they just completely disregard everything else because everyone loves a yes man. Everyone loves someone who, can, who can't objectively look at something and say, hey, here's good and bad about this game. Like if you go and talk about Fallout, right? Like I can admit there's good parts of Fallout 4, but I also think that a majority of Fallout 4 is bad. But if you go over there and say like, yeah, parts were good and parts were bad. You, no, no, you can only talk about what you loved about Fallout 4, heckin' build a Reno, build your settlements, and do all this, you know, cool bullshit, and that's all you're allowed to talk about, or else you're just some kind of gatekeeping detractor, which, again, gatekeeping is a word that I fucking hate. It's such a stupid thing, like, oh, you, you hate something and you're telling me why it's bad, so that means you're trying to stop me from liking it. That's not how that works. You're not gatekeeping because I tell you that something is bad. If I say, oh, this game is bad, it doesn't represent the series as I have come to know it, this doesn't appeal to me as what was the previous audience, that is not gatekeeping. 
and th- it's why I think gatekeeping is honestly fucking it's it's just made up like what you're gonna stop liking the game because someone told you to like y- you have no opinion on the game other than what other people are saying I feel like gatekeeping is just a word made by people who can only like things because other people like them it's made it's literally a word just to justify liking something that th- the masses like it's so stupid it's like literally just uh, it's literally just the word that's thrown around it's the anti-criticism button you say you see someone criticizing something you say oh you're just gatekeeping you can't tell me that fallout 4 is bad because of this this and that you are trying to keep me from liking this game and so you're gatekeeping so it's just another word to try and demonize or alienate the older audience because it, it, like people like i said People just want to talk about what's good and you can never talk about what's bad. There's no objective look when you go to these echo chambers. And one of the things that I think is a good example of this is like Escape from Tarkov, where they would take so much community input from sites like Reddit to where now the game is like completely unrecognizable from its former self. And you get punished for engaging in any kind of PvP unless every single dot lines up. Like, there needs to be PMC karma, there needs to be scav karma. So if you kill PMCs, you can't buy from the necessary stores anymore. It's just stupid. It's just, again, it's just another thing that I think these echo chambers, they need to fucking go. They're just resulting in nothing but negative aspects of the community where people can't talk about anything. And like they act like these sites are for discussion, but having anything other than the most bland, milk toast opinion about the game is considered heresy. And then of course you have these stupid ass circle jerk reddits as well. Uh, one of the ones that I hate the most is Halo Circle Jerk, if you've ever seen it, where all it is is just people bitching because people are saying that they don't like 343 or they don't like modern Halo. And it's just them going like, oh, oh, they're bitching about Halo again. And it's just like, there's like an echo chamber for every side and it's just extremely annoying and stupid. I think everyone should be able to sit down and say, look, these are the parts I liked. These are the parts I didn't like. And when you criticize something, it shouldn't be considered gatekeeping. It's like no one is sitting. I mean, I'm not going to say no one, but at the same time, it's like, bro, calling someone a tourist isn't gatekeeping. Okay, I'm sorry to say this, but if you don't play the games or you only like them because the show was popular and you played them for like a week and have already forgot about them. Sorry. Yeah, you were a tourist. That's not gatekeeping. A fan is a fanatic. It's someone who loves a series, someone who consistently goes to that series wants to talk about it wants to engage in it and you can sit there and say oh you're looking too deep into it or whatever the fuck you want to say about that but it's just not true uh you can talk about these as much as you want that's the whole point of these forums for discussion and you just sitting there glazing things isn't any better than someone trying to criticize it and look for a better product it's just that's just the way it is And I think it's equally important to talk about the bad things from the community as it is from the developers. The community is just as much to blame with focusing on these echo chambers of, oh, you can only have this one opinion on this one thing or else you're the bad guy. You're a terrible person because you you want to prevent me from liking Fallout 4 because I only play it for the building aspect. No, that's not how this works. That's not how anything works. You can sit there and yell gatekeeper or whatever and like say, oh, you don't need to play the game to be a fan of it. Fuck off. Yes, you do play the game or don't talk about it (laughs) it's just that simple and having these communities where it's just like trying to get people in or herd people into a franchise to try and generate more profit for the company that holds it that already doesn't care about anything that you have to do other than whether or not you're handing them money is just incredibly stupid and incredibly dumb mindset to have this thing where everyone needs to try and recruit people into a game or you know anything like that is just so dumb people need to look at things objectively and i think the community is just as responsible as the actual companies making the games 
you can't just sit here and ape everything because you like parts of it and or the overall majority of it was good so you know you just completely disregard the bad and take any form of criticism as gatekeeping or otherwise you know detracting from what you like or treating it as criticism means that you're saying that i can't like it when that's just not true that mentality just breeds these echo chambers on both sides and creates an environment where they just want to focus on this one large crowd that will support no matter what. And then they completely disregard any form of criticism, which leads to a fall off in quality, which is what you see exactly with Bethesda products. You look at Bethesda products now, they are exactly the result of Skyrim people coming in and aping Bethesda so hard that everything they do cannot have a flaw unless uh, like the only time I've ever seen it is Fallout 76. But now even hating Fallout 76 is a problem. And there's still plenty of reasons to hate Fallout 76 from microtransactions, the goofy atmosphere, the complete tonal shift from the entire Fallout series. I can go on and on and on about this. But we're going to go ahead and wrap it up from there because I don't really want to do a 55 minute rant about all of this. If this is something that you guys like or want to see more of, please like, subscribe, all that good stuff because it really helps the channel and lets me know that this is the kind of content that you guys want to see. Also, I am back. For those who have stuck around this long, I took a few weeks to settle down to get my quality up because I believe that even though this is just for fun, I want to make videos that I can be proud of and something that I can always improve upon. And unfortunately, you might be like, oh, my fucking God, this guy is a PNG tuber now. Insert audio here. That shit is Insert fucking it here. trash, dog. Get the fuck off <laughs> And I got airway. a new monitor because while I enjoy widescreen, the support just isn't there for that yet. There's so much letterboxing on shit. If you play a game that's more than a year and a half old, you're playing letterboxed. And it's just so awful. So I ended up going with a uh, OLED Asus ROG monitor, one that just came out. It's like a 27 inch, fucking love it. So you'll be seeing footage from that right now. Uh, I don't turn on HDR because honestly, HDR just looks like garbage in my opinion. But hey, you know, start that war somewhere else. But anyway, yeah, PNG tuber now. I just want to add some more character to the channel, some more flair, make it a little bit more fun. And I also want to start doing some longer, more edited videos like retrospectives and things like that. This is kind of just to test the waters out with the PNG tuber thing. I still want to do these like little rants and stuff like that. Those aren't going anywhere. But in between, I do want to do some more higher quality productions when it comes to actually making like retrospectives and reviews. So those are actually going to be like heavily edited and, you know, made to look like at a professional level quality or at least not professional but to at least look really good and so that's kind of the goal with the future of this channel and you know for those of you guys who are subscribed i really appreciate the support and uh, i hope you guys are looking forward to that have a good one peace